Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Will a new bombshell report lead to witnesses? I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill with the latest on the impeachment trial. Outside with live cam, if you're just now waking up, maybe Mother Nature woke you up. We have some strong showers and storms in the area. Mike will get you updated on how much rain we could see and more importantly when this could all clear out. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, January 28th. And we are set up for a very messy morning commute, so you need to keep that in mind as you head out today. I've already gotten one alert from Marcus about a major accident. That's right, and we'll talk to Marcus in a second so that we've heard the rain moving in. Mike, seen a little bit of lightning. Haven't heard any thunder yet, though. I heard a little rumble of thunder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and boy, it was uh, about a half an hour ago. All of a sudden, the heaviest part of that storm came out. I haven't heard of rain this hard on this building in a long, long, long time, time yeah. but things are are moving along really quickly. These storms are moving at about 50 miles per hour, wow. which is very fast, and uh, they have kind of settled down a little bit as well because at one point they were uh, producing, there were some reports of quarter inch to about half inch size hail in eastern Medina County just to, to the west of Castroville. Now this is live cam looking off to the east and uh, there were a couple of lightning strikes there uh, just a couple of moments ago and as you can see everything has definitely settled down. So as this loops on through back there that's the cell when it was just so intense as it moved on through Medina County and produced some of that hail and then the heavy downpours moved right through right there in downtown. Now obviously a lot more rain in Wilson County. We do still have some lightning being detected around here and some fairly decent downpours and this will continue, like I said, to work its way off to the east. So uh, Nixon, you've been getting some of this rain. Some of the heavier storms are going to continue to work their way off to the east. And as far as here in town, uh, it's going to continue to come to an end, but as heavy as that was coming down, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of runoff in places in and around town. So there's going to be some ponding on the roads here and there. Obviously, roads are wet. They're not going to dry out that soon. Temperatures are very, very warm. We are about a uh, good 15 degrees or so above normal as of right now. We do have somewhat of wind now because of the heavy rain that was coming down. Visibility was definitely reduced somewhat. So if you're hitting the road right now, do take it easy. Uh, mold is low as of yesterday's count. Mountain cedar, I'm sure a lot of that should get washed out uh, by the time the reading is taken later on this morning. Mold's probably going to be going up a little bit, though. Now, as far as the forecast, this morning we'll still have some of the showers and thunderstorms. It's starting to come to an end off to the west. We'll still have them from about Bear County off to the east. And if it's not raining during the morning commute, like I said, it's still going to have uh, some wet roads out there and probably some ponding on the roads. And then later on today, plenty of sunshine, 68 for a high temperature, not as warm as the past couple of days. It is going to be breezy. Northwesterly winds 15 to 25 miles per hour. So that'll then shake up the mountain cedar trees again later on today. Tomorrow looks fantastic. Another rain chance coming in late in the week. Closer look at the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Already got some problems out there? We do, Micah. So first one, we're going to this major accident uh, that we have here. I-10, Vance Jackson area. So if you're headed from the uh, Dave and Busters, look, it just cleared. So that's the great news. But this is a perfect example. You have a both a, a hill and a curvature in the highway here, along with these slick conditions. So long turns and curves, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas. Now, both hands on the wheel this morning is a must. Put away those distractions, those cell phones and those coffee cups, because you hit just a little bit of uh, water, just standing water on the roadway, and your wheels liable to jerk one way or the other. 604 at Highway 151, you can see folks also moving a little bit slower there. Uh, 410 and Highway 151 as well. And up on the northeast side, 35 at 410. So give it some extra time this morning. You will have to reduce that speed uh, because of this heavy rain, about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Mark and Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. Our top story this morning, the impeachment trial could possibly ter be turned upside down following a bombshell report. The claim from former National Security Advisor John Bolton saying President Donald Trump withheld federal aid to Ukraine in exchange for investigating the Bidens. ABC's Andrew Dembert shows us why the president's legal team strongly denied that. Raised by these articles. In a fight to the finish, Trump's team preparing to wrap up opening arguments today. You cannot turn conduct that is not impeachable into impeachable conduct simply by using words like quid pro quo. Trump's attorneys addressed the explosive allegations made by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Nothing in the Bolton revelations, even if true, would rise to the level of an abuse of power 
or an impeachable offense. A draft of his upcoming book, Bolton says the president personally tied military aid to the Ukraine with investigations into his rivals, something the president's team and Trump himself flatly deny. So I haven't seen a manuscript, but uh, I can tell you nothing was ever said to John Bolton. But pressure is mounting. Democrats demand to hear from Bolton. We need all four of our witnesses, John Bolton and Mick Mulvaney and two others who were the president's henchmen. And now some outspoken moderate Republicans like Senators Susan Collins and Mitt Romney could break party ranks and vote with Democrats on whether to consider calling additional witnesses. I, I think it's uh, increasingly likely uh, that other Republicans will uh, will join those of us who think we should hear from John Bolton. Senior White House sources tell ABC News the president's legal team is preparing for the possibility of new witnesses in the impeachment trial. The critical vote on witnesses could come as early as this week. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Capitol Hill. New concerns about the coronavirus. The United States, along with other governments, are getting ready to fly people out of China following a rise in deaths. At least 106 people are dead, and the viral disease is causing global concern. Tens of millions of people in China are currently dealing with full or partial lockdowns as health officials try to limit the spread. The U.S., Japan, Mongolia, France, and other governments continue to work on evacuations. Asian markets taking a hard hit because of the coronavirus. Markets tumbled in Hong Kong and mainland China after being closed for the Lunar New Year. South Korea's benchmark went down nearly 3.5%. The financial loss comes after a sell-off on Wall Street that gave the Dow its first five-day losing streak, since, streak rather, since early August. The S&P 500 had its worst day since early October. Shares also fell in Tokyo, Sydney and Taiwan. Now to the latest out of Iowa, Democratic hopeful Bernie Sanders pulling ahead in the presidential primary. Recent polls now show he is the front runner in two early voting states, but his opponents aren't very far behind. Cena's Nadia Romero shows us what we can expect to see less than a week from the Iowa caucus. Right now, the Democratic Party is split between progressives and moderates, and many in the party think that if a progressive gets that nomination, that person will not be able to beat President Trump come November. But despite the backlash and the criticism, Bernie Sanders is on top. Bernie Sanders is shocking the political establishment. We are mounting this grassroots, unprecedented, multi-generational, multi-racial movement in a way nobody has ever seen. A pile of polling shows Sanders surging. In New Hampshire, the Vermont senator has a clear lead, with Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, and Elizabeth Warren battling for second place. It's even tighter in Iowa, with Sanders, Biden, and Buttigieg in the top tier. I am feeling good about Iowa, and I'm feeling good about other states. The swell of support in surveys, combined with formidable fundraising, could give Sanders an advantage in the Democratic primary. Suddenly, we have the Democratic establishment very nervous about this campaign. Some within the party are worried about Sanders being the Democratic nominee. 48% say a candidate with strong liberal views will have a harder time beating President Trump in the general election. Bernie is crazy Bernie. He's surging. Democrats are taking their cues from socialist Bernie Sanders in that group. With a week to go until the Iowa caucuses, just 35% say they definitely know who to support, meaning the first contest of the primary season is still up for grabs. As other candidates work to appeal to more moderate voters, Sanders continues to embrace his progressive agenda, which at this point is a winning strategy. We make history. We win the Iowa caucus. Big spending in Iowa continues with Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren and Andrew Yang rolling out big ad campaigns just this week. And right after the Iowa caucuses, all the candidates will then go to New Hampshire, where they will have eight days before the primary in that state. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. 439 on your stormy Tuesday morning, 58 degrees. Still ahead, Britain's Prince Andrew being targeted by the FBI after he allegedly provided zero cooperation in the Epstein case. What he's saying about their friendship. Back here at home, a new program aimed at helping working parents in the Judson Independent School District. After the break, how you can enroll your kids in pre-K three. And taking a look outside with live cam, please be careful as you head out. Roads are wet, we've got some storms in the area.
442 parents and teachers in Judson ISD looking forward to the new school year. The district announced they will offer full day pre-K for three year olds at all elementary campuses. The district says one of the biggest advantages to this new program is that parents won't have to break away from work to pick up their children because it will be a full day of classes instead of just a half day. We have a curriculum that will keep them engaged, where they're engaged in creative play, they're engaged in learning. It's going to develop their social and emotional needs, as well as um, having learned their basics in alphabet and in numbers. Current program offered at Judson ISDs for four-year-olds with a total of 1,100 students enrolled. Registration for pre-K-3 will be on the 20th and 27th at all Judson ISD elementary campuses. Your time now is 443 and it's 58 degrees outside. Plus, a British royal uh, offering to help with the Epstein investigation after the break. How Prince Andrew is now saying he will team up with the FBI after not cooperating. In this morning's GMA First Look, an international twist in the Jeffrey Epstein case. New York's top federal prosecutor clearly frustrated in the FBI's request to interview the British royal in connection to their investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. The Southern District of New York and the FBI have contacted Prince Andrew's attorneys and requested to interview Prince Andrew. And to date, Prince Andrew has provided zero cooperation. In November, Prince Andrew stepped back from his public duties, citing his former friendship with Epstein as a disruption to his family's work and publicly offering to help law enforcement with their investigations. Officials say he has not. This morning, just two words from Buckingham Palace. No comment. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. Uh, point of fact on that story real quick. We also want to point out that as of this hour, Prince Andrew has not shown any new interest in assisting with the investigation. Let's check on the roadways. I know that we reported at least one major accident mm -hmm. this morning. How's it looking now? Well, that one eastbound, uh, eastbound I-10 right over Vance Jackson as you're headed towards West Avenue, that accident has cleared. So now let's move on to the next one. This one's westbound Highway 90 as you're approaching the interchange of 6 and 04 right there uh, next to Pew Road. And it looks like officers just managed to move everything off the main lanes onto the access road. But let's take a look through Trans Guide at some other areas. Now, 35 at 410, start to see a steady stream of traffic. And look at the, all that water being kicked up, all that spray by those vehicles northbound and southbound along 35. So even though in this part of the city, it looks like the rain has stopped, still have a lot of water sitting on the roadway. So be careful with that. Here in the downtown area, 35, 37, the interchange, it's just as bad. So watch out for those lower levels as well. So far, everything looks pretty good. At, uh, as I drove through there early this morning, it seemed to be okay, but uh, just use caution if you're headed into the downtown area uh, with those lower levels. Right now, have a lot of water here, 21 and Grayson. Up there by the airport, 21 and 410, uh, not too bad there. Those connector ramps look pretty good. And there's uh, 37 and Jones, what you can make out there. There's 35 at 410 and uh, there's 21 and Grayson. And folks, long turns and curves, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas. You do not want to be applying the brake as you're trying to turn and maneuver uh, through those uh, through those roadways. It could be a long commute for some later on. So just remember, give it some extra time. And with these wet conditions, you want to slow down at least 10 miles an hour below the speed limit. When's the last time we saw that? Uh, it's been a while. Uh, and I got caught right in it. I mean, as soon as I was pulling into the station, lightning, thunder, and big fat raindrops. Yeah, those storms uh, started brewing and developing out to the west uh, late last night in the wee hours this morning and really, really were moving uh, about 50, 55 miles per hour with some of the, the estimates. And so that's why, you know, the heaviest storm moved through Medina County and Bear County and uh, is now sliding off to the east, obviously looking at some of those trans guide cameras who still do have some rain. So mm -hmm. it'll clear out later on this afternoon, but the morning commute is definitely going to be kind of slow going. This is live cam over there and looking off to the uh, east and we're not seeing any of the lightning strikes anymore and as you can see there's the you know perfect explanation of what's going on as the rain continues to taper off off to the west and we do still have all this moderate to at times heavy rain that has continued to work its way off to the east and it's just some leftover light rain uh, here in town and then you just go over in toward Wilson County we've got a couple of heavier downpours right here some of these red areas and even still a few uh, lightning strikes but definitely things did settle down of course this was uh, did have a history of producing some uh, p to kind of uh, marble sized hail 
about a quarter inch to half inch in in and around Castroville earlier this morning, Western Bear County, but it has weakened significantly. So there are no more no more reports of any uh, hail associated with any of these storms. As far as the rainfall totals from this, uh, Estimates off to the west is just radar estimates, maybe an inch, inch and a half, but it all came down basically at once. And that's been the situation here in town about, uh, what, an hour or so ago when that heavy cell moved on through. So that's why, like Marcus was pointing out, there's a lot of standing water on the roads and there's going to be a lot of runoff this morning. Somewhat reduced visibility just because of the heavy rain, a little bit of fog mixed in as well. Not bad though, 58 degrees here in town, way, way above normal. No more rain cooled air moved in with any of these storms right now, but we aren't going to be moving up in temperatures all that much because we do have a bit of a front moving through. This is kind of the the precursor to the front, if you will, even though the winds have started to shift around, we'll really start to get the, the flow of drier air moving on in here later on this afternoon and somewhat cooler air. So even though we'll still be on the above normal side today up in the upper 60s, it's going to be obviously a lot cooler than the past couple of days when we were in the 80 degree range the Sunday and 70s yesterday. And that dry air is going to be in place for tomorrow. So it's going to be a gorgeous day tomorrow. But we do have another rain chance coming on in here by Thursday. So here's the forecast today. Rain continues to move out. Leftover clouds this morning, sunshine throughout the afternoon, and that's going to be the situation into tomorrow. And then more rain, like I said, starts to slide on in here as we go in toward Thursday. Here's a different computer model. It goes a little further into the future to show some of the rain by Thursday, lingering into Friday. Then we'll start to clear out uh, later on the day on Friday. Might still have a few leftover clouds around on Saturday. Saturday is going to be a good looking day, cold morning, nice afternoon, but still I think a, a few clouds. So uh, we'll still have some speaking of clouds, some hanging around about San Antonio East today at noon and more sunshine off to the west 70 already at noon and 75 that graphic. Pardon me. I was a little busy today. It's going to be 68 for high temperature today with more sunshine out there. Northwesterly wind at about there's the correct number. Uh, northwesterly wind about 15 to 25 miles per hour. 62 tomorrow after cold store starts. So kind of a normal day tomorrow. Temperature wise chilly again on Thursday and then it stays really chilly Thursday and Friday only in the 50s. But we'll get back into the 60s and 70s by the weekend. Oh, our uh, big party and the and the cattle drive. Case Acquarell, yep. It's going to be so fun Saturday. Yeah, you can go online and get some tickets for that and front row seats for the parade right there. And yes, there's going to be a lot. There's a check wagon and uh, there's a lot of great stuff going You're on. You're going to be cooking all that stuff. I'm not going to be cooking, cooking but beans I'm, and I'm not cooking beans. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. You didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> She's not cooking beans. I'm not cooking beans. 452 right now, 58 degrees. Rapper Eminem is making history once again after his new album debuted at the top spot. Coming up in our Spotlight News, who he was head to head with for consecutive number one hits. Tributes to Kobe Bryant and historic wins for Billie Eilish, not a big boon for the Grammys ratings, down 6% from last year's show. 18.7 million people checked out music's biggest night on CBS, which is still the biggest audience for a non-sports TV show this year, beating the Golden Globes by almost half a million viewers. Eminem making history on the charts, his new album Music To Be Murdered By debuts at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart, his 10th album in a row to debut in the top slot. That's a record. He was previously tied with Kanye West at nine consecutive number one debuts. Eminem joins an elite club of acts with 10 number ones, which includes the Beatles, who hold the record with 19, Jay-Z, Bruce Springsteen, Barbra Streisand, and Elvis. On the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, a third week at number one for rapper Roddy Rich and his song The Box, Eminem's Godzilla featuring Juice World debuts in third. Ladies and gentlemen, the Oscars following in the footsteps of its award show cousins, kind of going almost all plant based for its parties. Monday's Oscars lunch was completely vegan. However, the big Oscars after party, the governor's ball catered by Wolfgang Puck and well known for its excess of meat, will be 70% plant based. The other 30% will include meat, fish, dairy and eggs. The Golden Globes, SAG and Critics' Choice Awards this year served 100% plant based meals at the encouragement of Joker star Joaquin Phoenix. And happy birthday today to Alan. Alan Alda, the Emmy-winning MASH and West Wing star, is 84, while modern family actress Ariel Winter is 22. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Your time now, 4.57, 58 degrees outside. Next half hour, National Transportation Safety Board revealing some more information about what caused the helicopter crash that killed nine people, including basketball star Kobe Bryant. We will take a look at what they have so far. 
Plus, if you're a fan of those old classic Atari games, we're going to tell you about a brand new hotel that will make you feel right at home. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Suspects still on the run this morning after a shooting on the west side. A man in critical condition will have more on the investigation. Federal officials unveiling more details about the cause of the helicopter crash that killed nine people, including basketball superstar Kobe Bryant. Showers and thunderstorms in the area, including some pretty significant rainfall. Mike Osterhage is standing by to get you update as you wake up on this Tuesday morning. It is January 28th. Mother Nature is providing an alarm clock this morning. Those were some storms that rolled in pretty loud. Yeah, we haven't heard rain that heavy in quite some time. Yeah, it's going to stick around through the whole commute, Mike. Well, it is starting to come to an end, and I was just checking to see what uh, rainfall total out there at the airport picked up about a third of an inch of rain, which all came down basically at once. Some areas picked up uh, close to an inch or inch and a half, especially heading out to, to the west along Highway 90. And that was just, again, one rain gauge. The heavy cell moved through downtown, and there's a lot of ponding on the roads and still a lot of runoff, and Marcus is going to show you that in a second. Temperatures are in the uh, basically mid to upper 50s and low 60s, so we're still way above of normal. A lot of humidity out there, so a couple of hints of fog are possible as well. The wind has now settled somewhat uh, associated with those storms. Winds are out of the northwest pretty breezy, and as you can see, everything continues to work its way off to the east. At one point, that cell, which uh, just loops back on through right there, right around Hondo, was moving at about 50 to 55 miles per hour. Did produce some pea and uh, marble sized hail, about a quarter inch to half inch size hail uh, in and around Castorville, and that continues to work its way out to these. We still obviously have some leftover showers in behind. There may be a couple of them even in toward mid morning, but the majority obviously is working its way well off to the east. And there's still some fairly decent cells around here, uh, right around Floresville, and this one, which is going to be moving in toward Nixon. Um, some moderate rain, still some lightning as well, but things have definitely settled down. No more reports of any hail with any of these storms. And as I mentioned, temperatures are in the uh, 50s as of right now. A little bit of reduced visibility, two and a half miles Stinson, New Braunfels, and again, basically the heavy rain coming down as well as some of that fog out there. Mold yesterday was on the low side. Mountain Cedar was on the high side. Now we do have a front moving through and winds are going to be picking up later on today. So that may knock that uh, up for tomorrow's reading and get a lot more Mountain Cedar out there. Anyway, as far as the uh, weather today, showers and storms are going to continue to work their way off to the east. A couple of leftover showers throughout the mid morning hours and then mostly sunny. Not as warm as the past couple of days. Still above normal 68, but not better in the mid 70s and even 80 like we had on Sunday. Cold start tomorrow, low 60s, nice looking day, nice January day finally. And then we do have some more rain the rest of the week, Friday, Thursday and Friday, cooler temperatures. It's going to be kind of raw Thursday and Friday. Looks like a pretty nice weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. I know we had a big accident earlier. What's going on now? Well, we've had two major accidents uh, so far, Mike. Uh, we had one on I-10 Van Jackson. That one cleared out of the way, followed by one westbound Highway 90 at Pew Road. That's right before you hit 1604, and officers cleared that accident. Now we have a minor accident, southbound 281, right there at sunset. So as you're coming into the quarry area, uh, watch out for that uh, one vehicle accident. Now these have all been one vehicle accidents, so there is ponding out there on the road. Ways. You want to slow down, give it some extra time, but most important thing, both hands on the wheel throughout your morning commute. This is 281 in Grayson, and this is a great example of just uh, how much water is still just standing there on the roadways that has not run off. So you will have to reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and please put away those distractions. Mark. Marcus, thank you. This morning, San Antonio police looking for the person responsible for the shooting or rather shooting a man on the city's west side. It happened on West Military near Timber Creek near a convenience store. The victim was taken to the University Hospital in serious condition. Police say several shell casings were found at the scene. They say they're getting different descriptions of the suspect vehicle, so they don't have a lot to go on right now. A new report is threatening to turn the impeachment trial upside down. A New York Times report says the president's former national security advisor, John Bolton, links the president to withholding federal aid to the Ukraine in exchange for investigating the Bidens. That's something the president's legal team has strongly denied. Now some outspoken moderate Republicans like Senators Susan Collins and Mitt Romney could break party ranks and vote with Democrats on whether to consider calling additional witnesses. The critical vote on witnesses could come as soon as this week. 
President Trump's travel ban will be back in court today. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals will hear arguments in three suits filed by U.S. citizens and permanent residents whose relatives cannot enter the U.S. because of the ban. U.S. Supreme Court upheld the ban on travelers from several countries with predominantly Muslim populations in 2018. But the appeals court will hear arguments from groups hoping to keep legal challenges going. An investigation is underway after a U.S. military aircraft crashed in Afghanistan. U.S. sources say the airplane was used as a communications link between troops in the field to headquarters. While the cause of the crash is being investigated, the U.S. military says there is no indication the plane was shot down by enemy fire. U.S. officials dispute Taliban claims that an additional aircraft had crashed. They are not providing any additional information, though, about the crash. New Details about the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant. Investigators describing the crash site as devastating. They confirmed the pilot was trying to climb above the layer of clouds just before the chopper went down. Overnight, more tributes as fans, admirers, and former teammates came together to mourn. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. Overnight, emotions running high as the NBA paid tribute to their fallen star. Players taking a moment of silence, hugging, crying as the world mourns Kobe Bryant and the eight others killed in Sunday's helicopter crash. This impacted so many families and there's husbands that lost their wives, wives lost their husbands, parents lost their children. This as we learn more about the final moments of that fateful flight. We know that Bryant's chopper departed Orange County at 9.06 a.m., heading to his daughter's basketball game. At 9.20, the aircraft circled near Burbank in a holding pattern. He's been holding for about 15 minutes. At 9.44, witnesses reported hearing a helicopter flying very low, and air traffic controllers informed the pilot they can't detect him on radar. Two Echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. The aircraft then apparently accelerated rapidly before slamming into a canyon near Calabasas at 9.45 a.m. The FBI now on the scene alongside the NTSB. Officials are asking for photos of the area at the time of the crash as they sift through the debris in search of answers. Among those killed, Brian's 13-year-old daughter Gianna, her teammate Alyssa, and her parents, John and Carrie Altabelli. Also on board, assistant basketball coach and mother of three, Christina Malzer. How do you tell a child their mommies? No longer with us. Her husband says the couple's daughter was supposed to be on board, but couldn't go because she was sick. The pilot of the aircraft, Era Zabayan, the company that trained him, says he had two decades of experience. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Just about 508, 58 degrees. Still ahead in the wake of the coronavirus, more on how Facebook and other companies are restricting travel to China. And next, remember that uh, Mr. Peanut ad for the Super Bowl? Planners Peanuts now polling the commercial. We'll tell you why. And taking a look outside once again with live cam, we have had rain in the area. It's causing some uh, wet roads and slick roads, and we have a lot of accidents to talk about. We'll check in with Marcus when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. It's now 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, when it comes to hand sanitizers, the Food and Drug Administration is warning people not to believe everything companies say on their websites. The agency wrote a strongly worded letter to Gojo, which makes Purell, warning the company to stop making unproven claims. The FDA takes specific issue with the site's claim that Purell may kill the Ebola virus, MRSA, and other germs. The FDA says if Purell wants to get approved as a drug, it can market whatever it can prove. If not, it has to stop making those claims. Planners are reportedly rethinking its plans to kill off its Mr. Peanut mascot in the wake of Kobe Bryant's death. The company said in a statement it's paused all campaign activities to be sensitive to those impacted by Bryant's death. In an ad released last week, Planners killed off its spokesman of 104 years in an explosive car crash, then hit social media with a campaign geared at getting people to share their sympathies for the fictional character. The campaign was supposed to culminate with a 30-second spot featuring his funeral during this year's Super Bowl. Planners will apparently keep its Super Bowl spot, but is still evaluating its next steps. 512, 58 degrees. I knew they were going to kill off Mr. Peanut. Right. I just can't do it. All right. Anyway, still ahead following the success of live action remake of The Lion King, Disney remaking yet another one of its classic cartoons. And next, if you're a fan of old Atari video games, we're going to tell you about a new hotel you might want to stay in, and it, it could be closer to home than you think.
Walgreens, we understand the speed of life never slows down. That's why we're helping you get the care and attention you deserve even faster. That's our promise. Now, you can skip the line with Walgreens Express. Get in and out quickly with 24-hour locations. Or have your prescriptions delivered. Whenever you need us, we're always just minutes away. Walgreens. I dig because my son still lives with us. My 32-year-old part-time DJ son. Skin Sin number 17. Too many after parties. New Neutrogena Bright Boost with dullness fighting neoglucosamine. Boost cell turnover by 10 times for instantly brighter skin. Bright Boost, Neutrogena. Welcome back. Facebook and other tech giants restricting travel in China amid the corona outbreak, coronavirus rather outbreak. Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, big companies making changes to avoid the coronavirus. Yes, Facebook and the gaming company Razer are stopping non-essential company travel to China. They're also telling employees who are recently there to work from home. Many U.S. tech companies have offices in China. South Korea's LG has a complete ban on travel to the country. And Atari-themed hotels are coming to American cities. The video game company is teaming up with developers to build eight hotels in cities, including Chicago and Las Vegas. Amenities will include so-called gaming playgrounds. Some will host gaming events. And happy birthday to the iPad. Yes, this week marks 10 years since Steve Jobs introduced the tablet, calling it magical and revolutionary. Consumers snatched up 300,000 of them the first day they went on sale. 350 million have been sold to date. Did your mom ever hold up the iPad? <laughs> Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Ooh. One of the busiest guys in the room this morning is Officer Marcus Trujillo. I know you're plotting new accidents as we speak, Marcus. And there's still another one I'm trying to get to. Haven't had time for. We're talking about another major accident. Uh, Highway 90 and 410 area. That's in addition to these accidents that we have. We're looking at 410 up there by uh, Perrin-Bidal for another major accident. Perrin-Bidal, Starcrest area. Next, southbound 281 right there at sunset. So as we move over to Transguide, this is the big one here. 410 at Starcrest, as you can see, lots of flashing lights. At first, we only had one right-hand lane. Now it looks like two, possibly three of the right-hand lanes of westbound 410 just past Starcrest are blocked uh, for the emergency vehicles to uh, emergency operators to clear that intersection. So folks, you want to slow down well ahead of any of those turns or curves. And even on the straightaways, make sure you have both hands on the wheel because all it takes is just a fraction of a second. You hit some ponding water at highway speeds <clears throat> and it could cause you to lose control. And even though the uh, rain is settling down somewhat for some reason, still have just a lot of water on these highways. Doesn't seem to be draining off as quickly as it normally does. Came down pretty fast. Yeah, a couple of those cells that move through, you know, we can only speak from experience here, right in downtown. It, I mean, hit yeah. hard and it sounded like just buckets getting dumped on the ceiling. It, and the it was road, cold. So. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but like Marcus was talking about, a lot of it has uh, continued to sort of taper off and it's moving from uh, west to east and it's moving a lot uh, quicker than even some of the computer models that indicated yesterday. This is uh, looking off to the east. Obviously, the camera's a bit out of focus there, but still some drops on the lens. And as far as rainfall totals, now these are just some radar estimates right now. And there were the, the little spots where it was maybe an inch, inch and a half of rain. That's as that main storm moved right along 90 there from Medina County into Bear County. And then it wasn't quite as much. There was a fairly decent amount, uh, more widespread northern Edwards County out there. Also, one thing you have to kind of take this with a bit of a grain of salt, that some of these estimates might be a little under undercounted, if you will, because the uh, radar site at New Braunfels, the one that we usually rely on, is down for maintenance for a couple of weeks. And so this is coming out of uh, out of uh, off to the west around Del Rio, Brackettville site, and then down there around Corpus Christi as well. So 
that's why some of the rainfall totals, obviously the coverage is still getting in there, but some of that may be a little bit uh, understated because out at the airport is roughly a third of an inch of rain, which again doesn't seem like a lot, but it came down in a matter of minutes basically. So everything continues to work its way off to the east, all of the moderate to uh, some heavy showers, and we had that uh, very good storm that moved through. This is where it produced some hail just to the west of Castorville, some P to uh, kind of marble sized hail. Still just a couple of scattered showers in and around town right now, but that's on top of the heavy rain. And like Marcus was showing, there's still a lot of water on the roads. A lot of it's going to be running off because it came down so hard and heavy. Not uh, there's just a couple of spots, not a lot of lightning. Everything has definitely started to settle down, but still some decent rain that's continuing to work its way off to the east and visibility. There is some fog out there this morning on top of the heavy downpour. So just keep that in mind as you hit the roads. Mid 50s, very consistent temperatures right now and the humidity is very high as well. So that's why we do have obviously some of this, uh, some of the fog around there and that's been feeding some of these showers and thunderstorms. Now there is a front wind did shift around a little bit with the uh, the storm system, but the front's going to move on through here and that's going to pull down much drier air this afternoon. Clearing things out, we'll still have some leftover clouds around by noon. Clear, very cold tonight, down to normal readings, maybe even a little bit lower than that. Perhaps some freezing temperatures in the hill country tonight. And tomorrow is just going to be a sensational day. Then we've got another chance of rain coming in here uh, Thursday and Friday. And it's going to get progressively cooler. So Thursday and Friday, they're looking like kind of just cold, raw sort of days. 64 degrees today at noon. And still some, uh, some clouds around here. Most all of the rain is going to be out of the area, maybe a few leftover showers well off to the east by noon and then plenty of sunshine this afternoon 68 for a high temperature a mm, couple of degrees uh, three four degrees above normal tomorrow morning it's going to be a cold one down in the low 40s and a high of 62 degrees so about normal actually a little bit below that 40 on thursday morning only 50 for a high temperature with some more uh, showers around here and just the uh, mid to maybe upper 50s on friday it's looking like rain on Friday is going to be first part of the day and then we'll start to clear out somewhat. Still a few leftover clouds around Saturday. It should we start on Saturday if you're going to the uh, Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive and the Ksat Corral all downtown. It's going to be a beautiful day for it. Nice, you know, cool so you get a good cup of warm coffee and kind of bundle up there on Saturday. It's going to be nice. Yeah, but as far as today, watch the, the morning commute. Afternoon commute looks fine. Okay, thanks, Mike. Let's check the time right now. 522, 58 degrees. Well, Disney's at it again with another live action remake. This time, Bambi will head to the big screen. We have a first look coming up next. Five twenty-five. Now to movie and music news, including some new takes on familiar classics. Here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. It isn't every day a prince is born. Disney is going back into the vault. Variety reports Bambi is getting the remake treatment. According to the report, the beloved 1942 animated feature will be brought to life with the same photorealistic computer animation used in last year's The Lion King. Think of the splash it would make. See and describe his current work. No, no, no. Mick Jagger is giving movies another whirl. He plays a sinister art dealer in The Burnt Orange Heresy, based on a 1971 crime novel. The neo-noir thriller opens in Los Angeles and New York on March 6th. Songs that I grew up with that I remember really well that were part of the family record collection. You've got to be taught to be afraid. James Taylor loves The Great American Songbook. For his first album in five years, American Standard, the music legend reinterprets 20th century Broadway hits and other classics for acoustic guitar rather than the usual piano. American Standard arrives February 28th, then Taylor heads out on tour for a dozen dates in Canada beginning in mid-April, followed by 26 U.S. shows starting in mid-May. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Didn't even recognize James Taylor in that video. 526, 58 degrees. Still ahead, tens of millions of Chinese people are on lockdown due to the Wuhan coronavirus. And now some airports, including at least one in Texas, are closely watching passengers. President Trump's legal team getting ready for another round of arguments in his Senate impeachment trial. This says a book manuscript by the president's former national security advisor is turning heads. And food maker Bush Beans is going big for the Super Bowl. Not just a seven layer, but a 70 layer dip. Morning, it's Tuesday, January 28th. And it's 
wet outside and it's causing this guy to have a very busy morning. It is very busy. We haven't had a morning like this in quite yeah. some time. Uh, another major accident, this one's closer to the airport, southbound 21, just as you're passing uh, Airport Boulevard right there, before you go underneath uh, those flyover ramps for How many accidents are working right now? Uh, right now we have one, two, three, four major accidents. Uh, all of them appear to be one vehicle accidents. So the rule of the day is slow down, mm -hmm. put away those distractions, and both hands on the steering wheel. You will need full attention to your driving this morning. A little bit earlier in the newscast, Mike was talking about some of these bigger storms and they were moving at a pretty healthy clip. Yeah, about uh, 50, 55 miles per hour earlier this morning. It was a storm that uh, was moving across from uh, Medina County where it did produce a little bit of hail into Bear County. And if you weren't awakened by it, because boy, it was coming down and yeah, the uh, thunder and lightning with that as well. And so that's what may be deceiving, like Marcus was talking about, because in a lot of spots, it's not raining anymore, but there is, so it was just coming down in buckets. So there's a lot of uh, running water or runoff, I should say, in standing water on the roads right now. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 50s. Rain is continuing to work to off to the east, and then later on this afternoon, it's going to be a beautiful day. Drier air, 68 degrees, really, really pretty. It's going to be kind of breezy, though, later on today. And then we've got a fantastic day tomorrow. And as spring-like as temperatures have been, that's going to change for the next couple of days. This is what it looks like out there at the airport. And of course, it's kind of a murky picture and uh, the camera's a little out of focus. We've got some rain on the lens there and there's how everything is pretty much east of 281. We do still have another cell that has uh, popped up there on the north side of Bear County, even a couple of uh, thunderstorm that uh, popping up a few lightning strikes being detected there right there around 1604 and 281 sliding across to the east. But again, the majority of uh, all the really heavy rain continues to move off into our eastern counties and, and it has settled down considerably. We're not seeing anything like what we saw earlier this morning and boy, it was just I mean, it, haven't heard rain hit the roof that hard in a long time here. Everybody's in the mid 50s as of right now, well above normal. A little bit of reduced visibility, not only with the heavy downpours, but also there is some fog out there this morning. Molds on the low side for the time being. That's yesterday's count, of course. Mountain cedars on the high side, but we do have some breezy conditions in forecast later on today. Won't be as warm as the next, as the past couple of days, I should say. 68 degrees, still slightly above normal, but no 70s or 80s like we just got done with. And then a very cold start tomorrow, low 60s for a high. That's it. And Thursday, Friday, more rain chances. Tomorrow's going to be beautiful, though. Uh, it's going to be kind of raw Thursday and Friday. Nice looking weekend. Sort of a mixture of uh, sunshine and clouds and warmer temperatures. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So you said a half dozen major accidents about? Uh, four. Four, okay. Almost half dozen. We're, we're climbing. We want to go the other way, though. We want to have fewer, not more. Uh, folks, right now, as we take a look, these are the accidents still in the clearing stages over on the west side. Northbound main lanes of 410 as you're approaching Bronco Lane. Watch out for emergency vehicles. Clearing an accident should be just about wrapped up in the next few minutes. Also, this one just clearing a few uh, seconds ago. Uh, westbound 410 right before you reach Harry Wurzbach. They just opened up those additional lanes. However, over there closer to the airport, we're looking at southbound 21 at sunset. And then further back, we have another accident. This is southbound 281 right before you go underneath 410. As you see, everything down to just one lane. Look at all that standing water still out there on the highway. So folks, remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and you will want to give it some extra time this morning. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, sir. Late breaking news out of Castle Hills. Right now, police are on the scene of a burglary at a drugstore. Katrina Weber just arrived on the scene, which is in the 6600 block of Blanco Road. Uh, what can you tell us? Good morning. Uh, we are out here outside Legends Pharmacy. This uh, this is Blanco Road just down from Loop 410. I want to give you a look at what's been going on. Uh, if you look over there, you'll notice that the front door here is smashed, the glass door. This is what an employee found. She says she was here to drop off a car. She noticed that glass door was smashed. She called the police. They went inside to take a look around, and as officers were inside the building, that is when the burglars came crashing out through yet another door, this other door on the, on the side of the building. Police saw them. They chased after them. They ran off into the neighborhood on the other side of Blanco, and police say that is where they lost sight of those two uh, burglary suspects. They did have their dogs out. They've been searching the neighborhoods with flashlights. SAPD is helping as well. They have uh, pretty much this whole area surrounded uh, with police officers. So if you are out and about in that area, the general area near North Star Mall, you'll notice a lot of officers, San Antonio and Castle Hills. They are keeping an eye out for those two suspects. Police say that the description that they have is that they were wearing 
blue hoodies and masks and they say one of those guys had on a mask that was similar to the one from the movie Scream. So they're looking for those two people who they believe broke in and then broke out of this drugstore. It's unclear exactly what, if anything, they took. Reporting live in Castle Hills, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. More meetings are planned this week to address the city of San Antonio's homeless strategic plan. The city and the firm home base are trying to gather input from each pocket of the community to find a way to solve the homeless epidemic. Right now, San Antonio spends more than $14 million on homeless issues, and that includes help to families in transitional housing, outreach services, and Haven for Hope programs. Taxpayers say it's time to move that help out of downtown and into neighborhoods. For a list of other meetings and locations, you can find them on KSAT.com. A final proposal and an actual plan is expected in March. Tens of millions of Chinese citizens are on lockdown due to the Wuhan coronavirus. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the CDC is monitoring passengers for coronavirus symptoms at several U.S. airports, including Bush Intercontinental in Houston. China says it's sparing no effort to curb the Wuhan coronavirus. That includes putting partial or full lockdowns into effect. The idea of shutting down several cities is an unprecedented attempt to have a curtailment of an outbreak. There are more than 4,500 confirmed cases in China with dozens of deaths, and the virus is spreading elsewhere. We have sustained transmission from person to person. That has to be interrupted, or this can get out of control even more than it is. There are at least five confirmed cases in the U.S., but the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention expects that number will rise. This week, the Virginia Department of Health investigated three potential cases, two of which were negative. Results for the third are expected later this week. We're very fortunate because we have a unique pathogens unit, the only one in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Health officials say they can't detect the virus simply from the symptoms, which is why a patient's recent travel history is an important factor. So people who have arrived from Wuhan, China, that specific information combined with their symptoms is how we identify who needs to be evaluated further. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. President Trump is expected to unveil his plan to bring peace to the Middle East today. He'll announce a plan alongside Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is visiting the White House for private meetings ahead of the unveiling. The administration has mostly kept the plans under wraps, but according to the Washington Post, it includes redrawing the border between Israel and the West Bank to incorporate Jewish settlements. It would also reportedly allow Israel to keep control over the territory it seized in 1967. In a win for the Trump administration, the U.S. Supreme Court has lifted an order blocking a change to benefits for immigrants. In October, a New York judge put an injunction on a rule that would make it harder for low-income immigrants to become legal. The administration's rule would allow people applying for a green card or visa to be judged on their income and education levels and if they use public assistance, like food stamps. But opponents feared it would stop immigrants from participating in government programs that could help their families. A 2019 Texas law that legalized hemp but kept marijuana illegal has led to widespread confusion. Since Texas lawmakers legalized some forms of the cannabis but not others, marijuana prosecution cases around the state have been thrown into disarray. Enforcement can vary greatly depending on where you live. Marijuana now classified as a cannabis plant or its derivatives with a THC concentration of more than 0.3 percent. Right now at KSAT.com, we have a full explanation of what the law means and what you need to know about any changes. 538, 58 degrees. Still ahead, when it comes to a healthy weight, experts say you may need to consider more than just what's on the scale, we'll explain. And next, the president's legal team fighting back as Democrats call for testimony from former National Security Advisor John Bolton. And live cam giving us a look outside. You can tell by this picture, it's not a very pretty start to your day. And a lot of accidents are working, so please be careful. President Trump's legal team getting ready for another round of arguments in his Senate impeachment trial. But the talk of the Senate floor surrounds the book manuscript by former National Security Advisor John Bolton, escalating Democrats' calls for his testimony. CNN's Karen Kafa reports from Washington. President Trump's legal team turning their attention to the Constitution. Purely non-criminal conduct, including abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, are outside the range of impeachable offenses. And Joe Biden and his son Hunter, who served on the board of a Ukrainian gas company. The House managers talked about the Bidens of Burisma 400 times. 
but they never gave you the full picture. Democrats dismissing the Biden arguments as a distraction. This is clearly an attempt to uh, feed red meat to their base, but also red herrings to take us away from the central issue. But as they lay out their case, a new revelation. The New York Times reporting, citing multiple sources that in a draft of his upcoming book, John Bolton writes Trump wanted to continue withholding military aid to Ukraine until the country helped with investigations into Democrats, including the Bidens. The Democrats using the manuscript information to continue their call for the former national security advisor and others to testify. John Bolton has direct relevant information. Republican reaction ranging from agreement to dismissal. I think it's uh, increasingly likely uh, that other Republicans will uh, will join those of us who think we should hear from John Bolton. And at the end of the day, it doesn't impact the legal issue before this Senate. A White House official says President Trump has watched parts of the trial and has been pleased at the performance of his legal team. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Tuesday morning, 543, 58 degrees. Still ahead, someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds. A new warning by health officials on what you need to do to prevent one. By 46 in your health news, when it comes to determining a risk of multiple heart attacks, the size of your stomach may be more important than the number on the scale. CNN's Mandy Gaither explains in today's Health Minute. In the U.S., someone has a heart attack every 40 seconds, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. A recent study suggests heart attack survivors who carry extra weight around their bellies are at greater risk for having another cardiovascular event. The research published in the European Journal of Preventive Cardiology showed the link was particularly strong in men. The study tracked more than 22,000 Swedish patients after a first heart attack attack and looked at the link between their waist circumference and events caused by clogged arteries like fatal and non-fatal heart attacks and strokes. Patients were followed for nine years with 7% of them experiencing another heart attack or stroke within about four years of their first event. Most of the patients had abdominal obesity. The risk for further cardiovascular events is thought to increase by more than 20% in men with waists larger than 41 inches and for women with waists larger than 38 inches. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. To get an update on the morning commute out there, 547. How many accidents are working right now, Marcus? Well, we're getting uh, reports now of a new accident. This is a major accident being reported Kitty Hawk at Topper Wine Road. So uh, be advised uh, that intersection there will be a little uh, difficult to ne negotiate through. That's Topper Wine at Kitty Hawk. Put that up there real quick for you so you can see that. That's going to be uh, just in between uh, 35 and 604 up there on the northeast side. So uh, we're getting these accidents as we clear some, others come in take their place. So remember, folks, you will have to reduce that speed, increase that follow distance throughout your morning commute. Now, of course, we're still uh, clearing it's, uh, another accident from earlier this morning. This one's up there by the airport, southbound 281, right before you go underneath 410. That's right there by those flyover ramps. So those two major accidents still in the clearing stages. The other ones have cleared. Now, we don't want any other accidents to take their place. However, we still have a lot of standing water out there on the road. And take a look at that, uh, the roadway down there, 281, right there by the airport, doesn't look like it's cleared up at all in the last 30 minutes. Uh, so not sure what's taking so long for these roadways to dry out. Maybe we need a little bit more traffic to get that friction going. But it well, doesn't is, look good for the morning commute. There is a lot of humidity, so that doesn't make room in the atmosphere for this yeah. to evaporate and dry out. And we still have a couple of leftover little showers around here, but all the heavy stuff is... is kind of moved out of town. As you can see in that picture, there was no rain out there. So it will continue to clear out from, from west to east throughout the rest of the And the, the weekend's the still so looking good. Weekend's looking pretty good. I think we'll have a couple of extra clouds here and there, but it's going to warm back up to the mid-60s and maybe close to 70. I say back up because temperatures are going to continue to drop down the next couple of days. So we had spring-like conditions uh, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. 
yesterday. Today it's still going to be on the warm side, but not as warm, and then it will continue to drop down. So this is looking off to the east from the airport, still kind of murky conditions out there. And notice how the all the well, the majority, not all of the rain, but is well off to the east of uh, Bear County. We do still have a couple of these showers that are going to be moving across 35 right now. We're there by 1604 kind of in the neighborhood of where that accident uh, Marcus was just talking about. And there's nothing being detected on radar uh, in and around town as of right now. And still some uh, moderate, even a couple of heavier showers. If you're going out 10, you're just going to continue to ride right along all of this rain. And these waves are kind of moving off to these. But and there's also doesn't look like any lightning is being detected. So things have definitely settled down from what it was going on earlier this morning where we had uh, even some P to kind of marble sized hail about quarter inch to half inch uh, diameter hail it, right around Castorville and Eastern Medina County. Visibility still a little bit uh, not, not great from well, Stinson all the way up in toward New Braunfels. Some fog out there and uh, obviously because of some of the rain and temperatures are in the 50s right now, mid to upper 50s. But so are the dew points, so we've got a lot of humidity out there, so there's no room for this water to evaporate. And yeah, once the traffic picks up a little bit, the friction tends to dry things out, but it's going to be a while. The road's going to be damp. Plus, when those storms move through here, uh, we've got about a third of an inch of rain out at the airport, but it all came basically at once. And so there's still a lot of ponding on the road, still a lot of runoff out there. We will continue to not only move the rain off to the east, but also bring in a lot drier air later on this afternoon on some kind of breezy conditions. The wind's going to be about 15, 25 miles per hour. It's going to be a gorgeous day. Lots of sunshine out there. And then with the clear skies, winds are going to settle tonight. Dry air. We are going to be cooling down to normal or even below normal temperatures tomorrow down around 40 and definitely 30s in the hill country. Tomorrow's going to be just a fantastic day. Thursday then we start to see the rain move back in here. So here's uh, the first computer model, and this has everything clearing on out by early afternoon. We continue to clear out overnight and then into tomorrow. Jumping ahead to a different uh, computer model, we are going to be seeing the clouds move back in here by Thursday, some rain throughout the day on Thursday, even on Friday. Then we're going to start to clear out somewhat. Now, some of these clouds, this model wants to keep a few more clouds around, maybe uh, especially down to the southeast on Saturday, but we'll still have a gorgeous day on Saturday. Cool morning and very nice in the afternoon. 64 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies. So things continue, like I said, to clear out from west to east, but a few leftover clouds still hanging around here and then later on today 68 kind of breezy lots of sunshine beautiful day tomorrow's going to be gorgeous chilly start and coolish in the afternoon 62 and then kind of raw on Thursday we'll start off at 40 and only get to 50 with some more showers around here mid 50s on Friday rain primarily the first part of the day on Friday and then the weekend still looks pretty good it's gonna be a little milder cool mornings pleasant afternoons mixture of sun and clouds a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Thanks. 552, 58 degrees. You've heard of seven layer dip, usually a popular Super Bowl snack. What about a 70 layer dip? I'll tell you about this record breaking dip coming up next. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, eight, zero, nine, fireball three, daily four, one, two, eight, four, fireball one. Cash five, six, 20, 22, 25, 31, and Texas two step, two, 14, 17, 22, with a bonus ball of 35. After a three-game win streak, the Spurs have followed it up with a three-game losing streak. Latest loss to Heartbreaker last night to the Chicago Bulls. All came down to the final play of the game. DeMar DeRozan had two shots at the foul line with under a second left. He sunk the first but missed the second. Despite DeMar's 36 points, Spurs lost in Chicago by one point. The final 110-109. Spurs will come back home to play the Utah Jazz next. That game's scheduled for tomorrow night. Tip-off 7.30 the AT&T Center. If you want to see the Spurs play, there are only two games left at the AT&T Center before the rodeo road trip starts coming up on February 3rd. Well, food maker Bush's Beans going big ahead of the big football showdown Sunday. The company created a 70, yes, 7-0 layer bean dip, which they say is a new Guinness Book World Records. Uh, record. It weighs more than a thousand pounds, doubling the previous record that stood at 540. Bushes says 19 people work 12 hours each to make the dip. It contains 10 different seven-layer dip flavors, including veggie, Cuban, and Fiesta, layered on top of each other. 
The dip released ahead of Sunday's Super Bowl, where seven layer dips will feature prominently in many parties. Bushes says the 70 layer dip has been donated to a charitable organization. Right now it's about three till 58 degrees. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we all have our go to social media sites. And our next hour of GMSA will show you how to get the most out of social media. Transkide accidents continue to be a major problem and we're hoping the situation improves, but it may not be the case. We'll get updated with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Time saver traffic is coming up. Outside with live cam, showers and thunderstorms have been moving through the area early this morning, and the morning commute is an absolute mess so far. Very rainy start to your Tuesday. GMSA has got you covered. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Tuesday, January 28th. Thank you for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, pack your patience as you head out today because there are a lot of accidents, wet roads. But at least uh, the storms have moved off a little bit out of our viewing. Well, it's still in our viewing areas to the yeah. east now. Uh, they've moved through uh, Bear County, San Antonio. That was earlier this morning, about, uh, say, 3.30 or so. We had some hefty, hefty downpours moving on through here. Very strong cells. Those cells did produce some hail earlier this morning uh, in and around Castroville, about the P2 uh, marble-sized hail. And, yeah, most of the rain has now ended here in town. There's still a couple of uh, showers up there on the far northeast side, up there around 30. Five. So if you're heading up in toward uh, Selma Shirts, New Braunfels, you'll run into a couple of those showers. Marcus said it looked like there might have been a leftover sprinkler too. Possibly there around uh, 410 Cherry Ridge. It may be because of some of the uh, all that extra humidity out there as well. There's still a ton of it, so there's some little bit of reduced visibility. Uh, nothing, you know, Lavernia, New Berlin at all. All this continues to work off to the east, and there's well even a couple of uh, near Carn City. Still a couple of thunderstorm cell there, cells there, but most of the lightning has come to an end as things did settle down over the past couple of hours. So mid and even some upper 50s as of right now, and again. A little bit of reduced visibility due to some fog, a lot of it out there in Kerrville as well. Mold is on the low side, moderate or excuse me, high amount of mountain cedar. Uh, we do have some northwesterly winds later on today, so for tomorrow's reading, that mountain cedar may actually start to uh, go up somewhat. Temperatures are going to be uh, staying about mid upper 50s throughout the rest of the morning. The storms and rain is going to continue to work its way off to the east. We are going to see more sunshine and we'll make it up into the uh, mid 60s by noon. It's not going to be anywhere near as warm as the past couple of days, still slightly on the, the above normal side. Plenty of sunshine today. It is going to be a breezy, however, winds out of the uh, northwest primarily about 15 to 20. 25 miles per hour, a little gusty at times. We do have a wind advisory out to the west for uh, Val Verde County up through about six o'clock this evening. So I'll show you that in just a couple of minutes and it's going to continue to get kind of colder over the next couple of days. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So all the heavy weather moved on through and now Officer Trujillo has his hands full with a bunch of problems out there. We have uh, some other accidents uh, taking the place of the ones earlier this morning. So this one, this major accident, we're moving up to the northeast side, uh, Kitty Hawk at Topperwine. We actually have a, a crew on the way out there to get more details on this major accident. It looks like it's going to be there throughout our morning commute. Topperwine at Kitty Hawk. So if you could avoid that inner section, that would be your best bet. We're also still clearing. Well, it looks like trans guy changed his camera on me. Uh, we're also still clearing an accident, a southbound 21 right by the airport. We've, another one that's popped up. If we could change it to trans guide number nine on camera number nine, we're sh showing another tr accident. Uh, we're looking at uh, Ben's Engelman 35 area over there by the uh, SAMC. As you can see, they have a number of flashing lights on FM 78. So folks, reduce that speed, increase that following distance and put away those distractions this morning. Leslie. Top stories that we're following for you this morning. San Antonio police are looking for a suspect after a shooting on the west side. Police say the suspect shot a man outside a convenience store. This was on West Military near Timber Creek Drive. Right now they are getting mixed descriptions of the suspect's car. They're continuing to question witnesses. An east side business will need some repair work this morning after a dump truck crashed right through the side of it. Police said the driver of the truck lost control when the brakes went out, crashing through the Glamour and Style Beauty Salon on South WW White last night. The owner was inside, and the crash happened right behind him. Nobody was hurt. To hear the owner's reaction to all of this mess, go to KSAT.com. 
The city of San Antonio and the firm home base will listen to community members this week as they address the city's homeless strategic plan. Right now, San Antonio spends more than $15 million on homeless issues, but the problem is persisting. You can see when and where those meetings will take place. Just visit our website, ksat.com. Judson ISD will now offer full day preschool at all elementary schools for three year olds. The current program offered at Judson ISD is for four year olds with a total of 1100 students enrolled. Registration for pre K three will be on the 20th and 27th at all Judson ISD elementary campuses. The Los Angeles Lakers postponed tonight's game, postponed rather tonight's game against the LA Clippers as the city mourns the loss of Kobe Bryant. Meanwhile, the National Transportation Safety Board asking for any photos that may show the foggy conditions in the area of the helicopter crash. CNN's Daryl Forges has more. Overnight, emotions running high as the NBA paid tribute to their fallen star. Players taking a moment of silence, hugging, crying as the world mourns Kobe Bryant and the eight others killed in Sunday's helicopter crash. This impacted so many families and there's husbands that lost their wives, wives lost their husbands, parents lost their children. This as we learn more about the final moments of that fateful flight. We know that Brian's chopper departed Orange County at 9.06 a.m., heading to his daughter's basketball game. At 9.20, the aircraft circled near Burbank in a holding pattern. He's been holding for about 15 minutes. At 9.44, witnesses reported hearing a helicopter flying very low, and air traffic controllers informed the pilot they can't detect him on radar. Two Echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. The aircraft then apparently accelerated rapidly before slamming into a canyon near Calabasas at 9.45 a.m. The FBI now on the scene alongside the NTSB. Officials are asking for photos of the area at the time of the crash as they sift through the debris in search of answers. Among those killed, Brian's 13-year-old daughter Gianna, her teammate Alyssa, and her parents, John and Carrie Altabelli. Also on board, assistant basketball coach and mother of three, Christina Malzer. How do you tell a child their mommies? No longer with us. Her husband says the couple's daughter was supposed to be on board, but couldn't go because she was sick. The pilot of the aircraft, Era Zabayan, the company that trained him, says he had two decades of experience. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And right now at KSAT.com, we have reactions to the death of Kobe Bryant from around San Antonio. You can even watch a segment where our Steve Spreester interviews Greg Simmons, who is a pilot. He breaks down what happened leading up to the deadly helicopter crash. 606 right now. Authorities in China have released new coronavirus figures overnight. Officials say more than 4,500 people are now infected. The death toll has jumped to more than 100, and now we're learning new details about the plan to evacuate Americans who are trapped in the city where the outbreak started. ABC's Kimberly Brooks has that story. This morning, a new warning from the State Department urging Americans to reconsider travel to all of China because of the coronavirus. New time-lapse video shows a hospital in Wuhan built in a matter of days as the number of cases keep rising in the country. More than 4,000 are now sick. At least 106 have died. People in Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak, are mostly staying indoors. Back in this country, the CDC reports five confirmed cases and more than 100 people being tested for the virus. The U.S. government is organizing a charter flight for Americans trapped in Wuhan. The flight is expected to arrive tomorrow morning at Ontario International Airport in Southern California. But first, passengers will be screened during a refueling stop in Alaska. Any passengers showing symptoms will be treated there before they fly on to California. Kimberly Brooks, ABC News, New York. The CDC says the virus is not spreading in America and there's no evidence that people are contagious before showing symptoms. Officials say a vaccine could be months perhaps even years away. There is still time to donate blood and help replenish the dangerous shortage in San Antonio this week. Our KSAC community partner is holding a blood drive with the University Health System. The process takes only about 30 minutes and each donation can impact up to three lives. If you would like to donate, just go to University Hospital. That's in the 4500 block of Medical Drive. Donor rooms are open from 830 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon today and Thursday. They will stay open later tomorrow until 7 p.m. And for you early risers like us on GMSA, donor rooms will open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 on Friday. For more information, go to KSAT.com. Click on the KSAT Community tab. Right now, it's just about nine minutes past the hour, 58 degrees. The impeachment trial continues later this afternoon. We're going to break down what you need to be aware of 
before the senators reconvene. Bernie Sanders surging in early voting states and other Democratic candidates are struggling to catch up. We'll see how the senators surge could affect the general election. And taking a look outside with live cam. Remember, roads are wet. There are the droplets of rain on the trans guide cameras or a live cam, I should say. But we're tracking it for you. Six twelve to politics now. Bernie Sanders pulling ahead in the Democratic presidential primary. New polls show the Vermont senator at the top of the race in two early voting states, but a cluster of candidates are close behind. CNN's Nadia Romero has a look at the race under a week away from the Iowa caucus. Right now, the Democratic Party is split between progressives and moderates, and many in the party think that if a progressive gets that nomination, that person will not be able to beat President Trump come November. But despite the backlash and the criticism, Bernie Sanders is on top. Bernie Sanders is shocking the political establishment. We are mounting this grassroots, unprecedented, multi-generational, multi-racial movement in a way nobody has ever seen. A pile of polling shows Sanders surging. In New Hampshire, the Vermont senator has a clear lead, with Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, and Elizabeth Warren battling for second place. It's even tighter in Iowa, with Sanders, Biden, and Buttigieg in the top tier. I am feeling good about Iowa, and I'm feeling good about other states. All of the swell of support in surveys, combined with formidable fundraising, could give Sanders an advantage in the Democratic primary. Suddenly, we have the Democratic establishment very nervous about this campaign. Some within the party are worried about Sanders being the Democratic nominee. 48% say a candidate with strong liberal views will have a harder time beating President Trump in the general election. Bernie is crazy, Bernie. He's surging. Democrats are taking their cues from socialist Bernie Sanders in that group. With a week to go until the Iowa caucuses, just 35% say they definitely know who to support, meaning the first contest of the primary season is still up for grabs. As other candidates work to appeal to more moderate voters, Sanders continues to embrace his progressive agenda, which at this point is a winning strategy. We make history. We win the Iowa caucus. Big spending in Iowa continues with Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren and Andrew Yang rolling out big ad campaigns just this week. And right after the Iowa caucuses, all the candidates will then go to New Hampshire, where they will have eight days before the primary in that state. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Curious about traffic, but almost afraid to ask at 6.15. All right, fingers crossed for good news, Marcus. Well, we don't have as many accidents as we had earlier. Does that count? It does. Okay. Now let's take a look at the ones we do still have. This one here, uh, we're moving over to a major accident. Southbound 35 Access Road, right there at George Beach at the entrance to uh, the hospital parking lot there. So watch out in earlier reports very early this morning or that uh, on the base that they had a power outage. So not sure if they were able to restore power or not. And then we also still have this accident here, major accident, Topper Wine at Kitty Hawk, right at the intersection. And that one expected to be with us for quite some time. Now going back to the George Beach 35 Access Road accident, there you go. There it is on trans guys. So it is definitely hindering traffic on the access road for southbound 35 main lanes look OK. They're moving a little bit more cautiously, but take a look main lanes and the access road. You can still see wet roads out there. So folks, you will have to give it some extra time this morning. And if you're going to the base uh, through that hospital entrance, give it a lot of extra time oh, or just man. go around. Might be better to go in through Harry Wurzbach. What a mess. Wow, what a mess. We just made it in the door this morning when the showers just, I mean, it a deluge. It was starting to hem down as I was getting out of the car and thank goodness I had a rain jacket in the car. Yeah, and uh, when those storms moved through because it was really, really strong earlier this morning, that uh, cell that moved in from the hill country across basically along 90 and then through Medina County where it produced some hail and then here in town and it really came through gangbusters. Now this is looking off toward the airport and as you can see, it looks a little kind of fuzzy off in the background. There's no rain showing up right now, but like Marcus has been talking about, it is just wet out there because, again, all this rain basically came down in one fell swoop. Number wise, it's not anything really off the charts. I mean, about an inch and a half. These are just some of the, the radar estimates. And keep in mind, though, 
perhaps this is a little bit uh, understated here in around our area because the radar site there, radar is down for repairs for maintenance out at uh, New Braunfels. So we're just getting a lot of this data from uh, over there in toward Brackettville radar and then the one up around Colleen. But Again, it's been about an inch, maybe inch and a half, but it all came down all at once. Uh, 0.35 inches officially out there at the airport. Again, came down in probably <laughs> five minutes, it seems like it was coming down that hard and heavy when it moved through here in town. So most all of this rain continues to work its way off to the east. There's nothing showing up on radar right now. Perhaps a little bit of mist left over in behind because we do have a lot of humidity and some reduced visibility. Pretty good thunderstorms moving well off to the uh, northeast of our viewing area, and there's still a couple of uh, maybe a couple of lightning strikes down here just to the east of Carn City, and a couple of heavier downpours here. But and this will all continue again to work its way off to the east. We've got a lot of fog around Kerrville right now. And then uh, some around New Braunfels, a little bit of reduced visibility in and around town. Temperatures are in the mid 50s. Of course, humidity, dew point temperatures are running neck and neck with that. And that's why we do have some of this fog around here. Now, we are going to have the drier air come on in here throughout the course of the afternoon. Winds are going to be picking up out of the northwest as well. And then finally settling down tonight. And that's going to set us up for a pretty chilly morning tomorrow at or a little bit below normal. So it'll be around 40 or even 30s in parts of the hill country tomorrow. For today, however, wind advisory for Kinney and Valverde County goes into effect at noon up until 6 o'clock because winds are going to be out of the north at about 15, 25 miles per hour. All this rain continues to get out of here. Like I said, good looking afternoon today, great looking day tomorrow. Then the clouds and the rain come back in on Thursday in through Friday, and then we'll clear out somewhat uh, a couple of leftover clouds around on Saturday. And temperatures, you know, we started off spring like over the weekend, yesterday, and then today, temperatures are going to continue to be a little bit lower, still on the warm side, but they'll continue to drop down the next couple of days. So we'll be up in the mid 60s at noon, 68 for a high today, and then starting off at 41 tomorrow, only up to 62. So actually a little bit below normal. Chilly start again Thursday, and look at that, temperatures only about 50. So it's going to be definitely kind of a grilled cheese and soup kind of a day on Thursday of a raw day and some showers on Friday will clear out in the afternoon and the weekend looks pretty nice. Cool mornings and nice afternoons. Looking forward to Saturday. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 619, 58 degrees. The FBI is calling out Britain's Prince Andrew. They say he is not cooperating at all with the investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. Find out more in your GMA First Look coming up after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. T minus 10 seconds to crispier, fluffier, Eggo homestyle waffles. We are go for lift off. Now that they're crispier and fluffier, I think this one's a solo mission. I understand. Would you Lego your Ego? When life changes, so do your taxes. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt. Our tax returns come with a free lifetime accuracy guarantee. Life may change. Your lifetime accuracy guarantee won't. Tax prep guaranteed at Jackson Hewitt. <coughs> Skip to the good part with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Now with 25% more concentrated power. Nothing works faster for powerful cold relief. Oh, what a relief it is. So fast. Hey, fellas. We've got to talk. Mm -hmm. It's about your food. It has spray-on flavor and powdered meat. It's time for fresh food that belongs in the fridge next to our food. Now, who's hungry? Fresh Pet. In this morning's GMA First Look, an international twist in the Jeffrey Epstein case. New York's top federal prosecutor clearly frustrated in the FBI's request to interview the British royal in connection to their investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. The Southern District of New York and the FBI have contacted Prince Andrew's attorneys and requested to interview Prince Andrew. And to date, Prince Andrew has provided zero cooperation. In November, Prince Andrew stepped back from his public duties, citing his former friendship with Epstein as a disruption to his family's work and publicly offering to help law enforcement with their investigations. Officials say he has not. This morning, just two words from Buckingham Palace. No comment. 
It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. Big companies making changes to avoid the Wuhan coronavirus. Facebook and the gaming company Razor stopping non-essential company travel to China. They're also telling employees who were recently there to work from home. Meanwhile, South Korea's LG Electronics has a complete ban on travel to China. Atari-themed hotels are coming to American cities. The video game company teaming up with developers to build eight hotels in cities, including Chicago and Las Vegas. Amenities will include so-called gaming playgrounds, and some will host gaming events. One of these could be coming to Austin. And happy birthday to the iPad. This week marks 10 years since Steve Jobs introduced the tablet, calling it magical and revolutionary. Consumers snatched up 300,000 of them the first day they went on sale. And to date, about 350 million have been sold. In today's spotlight tributes to Kobe Bryant and historic wins for Billie Eilish did not help the Grammys numbers. Ratings are down 6% from last year's show. 18.7 million people watch the awards show. It's still the biggest audience for a non-sports TV show this year. It beat the Golden Globes by almost half a million viewers. We'll see how it stacks up to the Oscars, which, by the way, airs February 9th. Or right here in case at 12. Eminem just made history. His new album, Music to Be Murdered By, debuted at number one on the Billboard charts. It's his 10th album in a row to start in the top spot. It's a new record beating out uh, Kanye West, who had nine consecutive number one albums. Eminem also becomes the latest artist to join the elite club of at least 10 number one albums in a career. That club includes The Beatles, Jay Z, Bruce Springsteen, Barbara Streisand, and Elvis Presley. Your time now is 626 and it's 58 degrees outside. New details emerging about President Donald Trump's decision to withhold funds from Ukraine. We'll see how that could impact today's impeachment trial. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we all have our go-to social media site. In our next half hour, we're going to show you how to get the most out of your social media. And Transguide, see how things are looking. There's 35 at Ben's Engelman. Marcus has been busy all morning. We'll get an update. Live look at time saver traffic coming up. Will a new bombshell report lead to witnesses? I'm Andrew Dimbert on Capitol Hill with the latest on the impeachment trial. We've had showers, we've had thunderstorms. Now looks like we've got ceilings dropping out there. Low clouds, maybe a little bit of fog, a little bit of everything on your Tuesday. Good morning to you. Welcome back. It is January 28th. Thanks for being with us this morning. And Marcus has been extremely busy. You've been carrying the weight of the whole show this morning. <laughs> It's, uh, it's been an interesting morning as far as accidents are concerned. We get some accidents come in, we clear them up, others take their place. Uh, right now we still have one major accident uh, in the clearing stages and it's probably gonna be with us throughout the rest of the morning commute, Kitty Hawk at Topper Wine. And Mike and I have been watching the Transguide cameras as well. Mm -hmm. Mike's been watching all of his maps and up on that far northeast side, it looks like now maybe we have fog to contend with. Uh -oh. Yeah. All the so we already had the wet roads, we had the ponding on the roadways, the slick conditions. Now we're gonna hinder your visibility. Oh, yeah, yeah, sort of next, we'll tie well, your left hand behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and jump on a pogo stick at the same time. Yeah, it's kind of the residual effects of all the heavy rain that we had around here and all this moisture left over. So uh, showers and even a couple of thunderstorms, they continue to work their way off to these. There's nothing showing up on radar here in town right now, except for some of that, uh, that fog. And then beautiful afternoon, 68 degrees, nice and pleasant. Not as warm as the past couple of days. It is going to be on the breezy side, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have wind advisory for some of our western counties later on today. This is one of looks like out there at the airport and yeah, the camera's a little bit out of focus, but as you can see, visibility is not bad out there from that standpoint. Uh, there's what it looks like on radar. Again, all of that rain, majority of it has moved off to these. Nothing is showing up here in town. And there may be a couple of uh, lightning strikes being picked up there around Quero. And that's about it right now. But we did have that uh, heavy cell that moved through Medina County into Bear County about, uh, what, 3, 3.30 this morning. That did produce some hail and then that weekend. But, boy, it dumped a... It wasn't measure-wise, you know, a third of an inch of rain officially out at the airport, but it came down all at once. It was just buckets of rain. Mid-50s, very steady temperatures and a lot of humidity out there. And here's visibility. Kerrville now down to a quarter of a mile. Four stints and two and a half in New Braunfels. And right in here, that, that pocket where the fog is starting to get a little bit thicker, and we'll have to watch that for the next couple of hours. Eagle Pass, zero visibility. And that's about the thickest as of right now. Eagle Pass and then Kerrville. So just 
like I said, watch it for it to get thicker as the uh, morning rolls on. Kinney and uh, Valverde County's wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until 6 o'clock. Winds throughout most of the air are going to be about uh, 15, 20 miles, 25 miles per hour gusting on top of that. Stronger winds out there to the west. Mold is low. Mountain cedar is on the high side. And we've got a couple of nice days this afternoon. Tomorrow looks fantastic. More rain chances to finish off the work week. And then we'll take a look ahead to the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now. More accidents. Well, we still have that one accident still in the clearing stages, that major accident. Uh, so we're moving over to uh, Kitty Hawk at Topper Wine Road. So be advised, it's probably going to be with us the rest of the commute. And as you saw a minute ago, uh, let me zoom back out there. Looks like we're having some other issue here. Southbound 35, we have two slowdowns. One uh, right at six, just after 6 and 4, but the other one right at that bend, uh, right as you're getting to Thousand Oaks. And then something else popping up here, I-10, 410. So it, they just keep coming in one after the other, folks. Let's take a look at Transguide right now, where we do have hindered visibility out there. 35 at 6 and 4. That's going to be up there on that far northeast side. As we move around to other areas, here's 37 and 181. No sign of the fog. However, look down below. Those roads are still wet, still very slick out there. I-10-604, that interchange very, uh, very heavily uh, as far as your, con your travel, your congestion is right now. But uh, take a look at the roadways. Still water on the highways, so it is slick out there. You need to reduce that speed, increase that follow distance, and remember, put away those distractions this morning. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. Castle Hills, <clears throat> excuse me, police are about to find, excuse me, are out to find the ones who got away, two burglars who smashed their way into and out of a pharmacy. An employee discovered the break-in before 4.30 and called 911. Katrina Weber has an update on this story from the 6600 block of Blanco Road. This is a story that seems to have a lot of twists and turns. And since the last time we were on, we were able to get some clarification from police. Now, it turns out that this is the door where the burglars actually apparently got into the building. The police say once they were in there, they then tunneled a hole into the pharmacy, which is over on this side of the building. A worker told me she showed up just after the glass was broken. She and police then went inside. Officers say when they were in there, they could see the burglars through the hole in the wall inside the pharmacy. And at that moment when they called out to them, that's when those two guys smashed their way out of the pharmacy through this door. The police lost sight of them after they ran across the street uh, to Blanco, across Blanco Road. They say that those two men ran off into the neighborhood. They searched the area with officers on foot and with dogs, but did not find those two men who were described as wearing blue hoodies and masks on their faces. So police are keeping an eye out for them now. They have set up a quadrant in this area. Uh, along Blanco Road and are still watching out for those two burglary suspects. Reporting from Castle Hills, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 635, a new report threatens to turn the impeachment trial in the Senate upside down. A New York Times report claims the president's former national security advisor, John Bolton, links the president to withholding federal aid to Ukraine in exchange for investigating the Bidens. That's something the president's legal team has strongly denied. ABC's Andrew Timber, Tim, Dimbert, rather, has more on how this could possibly change the trial. Raised by these articles. In a fight to the finish, Trump's team preparing to wrap up opening arguments today. You cannot turn conduct that is not impeachable into impeachable conduct simply by using words like quid pro quo. Trump's attorneys addressed the explosive allegations made by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Nothing in the Bolton revelations, even if true, would rise to the level of an abuse of power or an impeachable offense. A draft of his upcoming book, Bolton says the president personally tied military aid to the Ukraine with investigations into his rivals, something the president's team and Trump himself flatly deny. So I haven't seen a manuscript, but uh, I can tell you nothing was ever said to John Bolton. But pressure is mounting. Democrats demand to hear from Bolton. We need all four of our witnesses, John Bolton, and Mick Mulvaney and two others who were the president's henchmen. And now some outspoken moderate Republicans like Senators Susan Collins and Mitt Romney could break party ranks and vote with Democrats on whether to consider calling additional witnesses. I, I think it's uh, increasingly likely uh, that other Republicans will uh, will join those of us who think we should hear from John Bolton. Senior White House sources tell ABC News the president's legal team is preparing for the possibility of new witnesses in the impeachment trial. 
The critical vote on witnesses could come as early as this week. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. In other morning headlines, President Donald Trump expected to unveil his plan to bring peace to the Middle East today. The president will deliver joint remarks along with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Both Netanyahu and his political challengers support the plan. However, Palestinians are refusing to speak to President Trump and urge other Arab nations to boycott the event. The Justice Department says Attorney General William Barr will meet with a number of Jewish leaders in New York City today to discuss anti-Semitism and ways to combat it. Barr's visit follows a series of attacks in several of New York's Jewish neighborhoods, including a machete attack at a Hanukkah celebration and a shooting at a New Jersey kosher market. President Trump's travel ban will be back in court today. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals will hear arguments in three lawsuits filed by U.S. citizens and permanent residents whose relatives cannot enter the U.S. because of the ban. The U.S. Supreme Court upheld the ban on travelers from several countries with predominantly Muslim populations in 2018. Well, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all the top five most used social media apps, and they each exceed over 75 million monthly users. Our Eric Hernandez has ways you can better use your social media accounts. Every five seconds, there is a new Facebook profile created. There are over 6,000 tweets sent every second, and the like button on Instagram is hit 4.2 billion times a day. But how can you get the most from social media, like make money and network? First up, Facebook. You've probably seen the Marketplace feature. It's an online shopping channel that allows users to buy and sell from their local community. Like Twitter, it's all about timing. Over 50% of users that tweet at a brand expect a response within an hour. In order to see how many people respond to your tweets, use Twiriad. It's a tool that will give you recommendations on when to send out the tweet for the maximum amount of clicks. Finally, Snapchat has a new way to shop. Users can now point their camera at a product or barcode and Amazon will appear on your screen with a price. Looking for a retweet? Experts say the best time to tweet is between 9 and 10 p.m. and the best time to get noticed on Facebook is on Fridays. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Stock markets took a dive, posting their worst day since October over fears about the coronavirus yesterday. Well over 100 people have died in China and tens of millions of Chinese citizens under travel restrictions to try to stem the outbreak. Planters is reportedly planning to keep Mr. Peanut in the wake of Kobe Bryant's death. The company had released the first part of a comical Super Bowl ad when Mr. Peanut dies in an explosive car crash. Planters will apparently keep its Super Bowl spot, but it's evaluating its next steps. Barbie getting more diverse after Mattel unveiled a new version of the doll. One has no hair, other has vitiligo, a disorder that causes the loss of skin color in blotches. Meanwhile, Ken is now sporting longer hair. It is 640, 58 degrees. It came down to the last play of the game. The Spurs fell just short. We're going to see the final moments in the game against the Chicago Bulls. Your time now just about 44 minutes after six. Well, after a three-game winning streak, the Spurs have followed it up with a three-game losing streak. Latest loss, an absolute heartbreaker last night to the Chicago Bulls. LaMarcus Aldridge out with a sprained thumb. Spurs led by 10 going into the fourth, but all came down to the final play of the game. DeMar DeRozan had two shots at the foul line with under a second left to play. Sunk the first one, but missed the second. Wasn't enough time to grab the rebound and score. Despite DeMar's 36 points, Spurs lose by one Flipping point. Uh. The final 110-109 after the game. Coach Pop talked about his team's consistency. Not very consistent. You know, we will get leads and we'll lose them. Uh, just making some, you know, basic errors. Either lack of movement on offense or uh, gross mistakes defensively. So we're just not a very consistent uh, team. Spurs will come back home to play the Utah Jazz next. That game, game is scheduled for tomorrow night. Tip-off 7.30 at the AT&T Center. If you want to see our Spurs play uh, at home, there are only two games left at the AT&T Center before the rodeo road trip begins, and that's coming up on February 3rd. Time once again to check on the roadways, and I believe I just got another alert about an accident, Marcus.
and you're about to get another one right now as we take a look at the roadways there are coming in folks left and right so let's uh, see what we still have working this one northbound or eastbound main lanes of 1604 uh, just past Bandera Road before you reach uh, Kyle Sealer Hausman there it's all blocking one of the main lanes so as you can see traffic backed up uh, all the way to Braun at this point moving over to this accident uh, I-10 410 the interchange over on the east side that's slowing down traffic for those northbound 410 commuters as you're approaching that I-10 interchange and we still have this one here topper wine at Kitty Hawk that major accident still in the clearing stages now take a look at another one this is southbound 281 before you reach Grayson right there at that uh, Josephine turn or curve rather that's where we have that accident accident currently in the clearing stages now because of all the slick conditions we have traffic backed up I-10 at Frio take a look uh, traffic backed up all the way before the upper and lower level come back together so it's definitely causing issues for some folks and then up on the east side and northeast side starting to get uh, some of that fog. There's 35 at Ben Zingelman and earlier we saw 1604 at 35 on that far northeast side. Right now as we take a look though, uh, not seeing any more accidents on Trans Guide. That's the good news. The bad news is we are starting to see uh, some of that uh, fog drift into areas up on the northwest side. That's I-10 Callahan and earlier this morning that uh, Trans Guide camera we could actually make out the next uh, exit out up there. It wasn't quite blurred as you see uh, due to all those uh, headlights coming at you. So folks, give it some extra time. Take your patience with you. If you're running late, guess what? You're already late. <laughs> you're not going to make up the time on the roadway this morning. I mean, why sugarcoat it at this point, right? You're just late. Well, and it's better just to be late than to be extra late and have an accident. So Right. Just be and we had the heavy storms earlier this morning, and now it's kind of all those, we were saying, the residual effects with, you know, some of the wet roads still, some of that fog out there, and this is over <laughs> by the airport, still kind of a, well, out of focus lens, but at least we can see some of the lights out there. Again, the rain continues to work its way off to the east. We still have a few leftover thunderstorms. Just when it looks like some of the uh, lightning strikes are done, we've got some uh, on this line in southeastern uh, Gonzales County, a couple of them down there by Beeville. Nothing showing up in town as of right now. 58 degrees out there at the airport, 55 Randolph and 54 at Bernie. And here's what some of the visibilities look like. Randolph is at two miles, fourth the airport three up the road in uh, New Braunfels and Kerrville right now is just a half mile visibility. So it's not like pea soup sort of fog, but it's just enough to kind of hinder your visibility uh, somewhat. We do have the uh, wind advisory goes into effect later on this afternoon for Kinney as well as Valverde counties. Wind is going to be it's did shift around a little bit earlier this morning out of the northwest and it's going to be out of the northwest picking up at about the 15 25 miles per hour gusting at times from there and even stronger out to the west and so that's why we do have that wind advisory now as far as the rest of today we are going to see temperatures getting up uh, into the low to mid 60s today at noon we'll still have some leftover clouds and even a couple of showers hanging around here by late morning and especially off to the east and then we continue to clear on out uh, by noon call it partly sunny skies and more sunshine off to the west and then plenty of sunshine later on today we're going to make it up to 68 degrees so just a couple of degrees above normal later on this afternoon normals right around the mid 60s uh, wind again out of the northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour much drier air is going to be moving in here as well so a comfortable day again except for that northwesterly wind and of course that's going to be shaking up mountain cedar trees again we'll have clear skies tonight temperatures will cool off fairly quickly once the sun goes down things are going to be settling down the wind advisory again is only in effect out there the, those western two counties up until six o'clock this evening so the winds will settle down we'll have dry air in place clear skies and that's going to set us up for a chilly morning tomorrow we're going to make it down to normal readings but that's low 40s here in town so 30s in parts of the hill country and after being at 80 on Sunday, mid 70s yesterday, upper 60s today, we continue to drop down with temperatures over the next couple of days. So low 60s tomorrow and then Thursday, 40 degrees starting off and only 50 degrees. And it's going to be a cold 50 because of the clouds as well as more rain. So just kind of one of those raw sort of days on Thursday. Same thing basically on Friday. We will start to clear out though somewhat later in the day on Friday make it up to 58 degrees and then the weekend looks pretty nice. Uh, cold mornings, especially Saturday morning, 40 degrees and then up to 65 sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds and up to 70 on Sunday. And of course the big Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive and the Ksat Corral are coming up on Saturday. 
Corral starts at 9 in the morning yep. to 1. Mm -hmm. Right. Parade's going to be at 11. And beautiful. So come on down. Yeah, we're going to all be there. We want to meet you. We come say hi. We want to shake your hand and take a picture. Yeah. They're going to be at the Corral. You got a big party there, right? We have a big old party. Yep. Leslie has her own booth and everything. 650 right now, 58 degrees. I do? <laughs> I am not cooking beans. It's the, corner, it's the fan club in the corner. Is that what it is? Yes. Nobody puts Leslie in a corner. What are you talking about? <laughs> Parents often believe it's their responsibility to shield their children from economic differences and social class. Tomorrow on GMSA, we are going to see new research that shows how children as young as five are not economically blind. All right, so you said nobody puts Leslie in the corner. Mm -hmm. And Mike's response was? What? Unless you're cooking beans. I am not cooking beans. Did you put bacon in? I. Oh, God. Racho. Let's go to live camp. Oh, Miss Malls. And then we'll go we'll to break and we'll come back recipe. and we'll kind of wrap all this up. You're watching TMSA live on KSET. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in California at the scene of the helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant and his daughter and seven others. We'll have the latest on the investigation, and then we're learning more about those other victims on that chopper. Plus, more tributes pouring in overnight. We're hearing from LeBron James for the first time, and of course, his former teammate Shaq, right here on GMA. Well, the Texas primary election is exactly five weeks away with so many candidates still in the race for president. How do you decide who to vote for? Right now on our website, we have an article breaking down where the candidates stand on big issues. And today on GMS 8 9, Max Massey tells us about some of the candidates' plans on things like taxes, health care, and the military. It's coming up at 9 right after Good Morning America. Right now it's 5 till 7. And we do have a live shot of that uh, major accident. So we're going to go straight to that major accident that we've been talking about all morning long. That's it, Kitty Hawk at Topper Wine. And uh, that one uh, still with us right now. We're being told that this is a fatal accident. Kachita Weber is on the scene. Uh, she's awaiting to get some additional details. But it appears that that fatal accident, Topper Wine at Kitty Hawk. So expect those emergency vehicles to be there for a while. Mike? All the heavy rain, uh, well, it's still in our eastern counties, and as you can see, it's kind of uh, kind of murky in behind that. Uh, we still have a couple of uh, a couple of lightning strikes being detected, and that continues to work its way off to the east. But of course, we have the residual effects, all the water on the road and the uh, fog in behind that. Mid 50s right now, and visibility is down to three miles at the airport. Two New Braunfels, two at Randolph, so just kind of watch it. And then a heavier fog up to the northwest. Uh, wind advisory goes into effect at noon up until six o'clock for Kinney and Valverde County. It is going to be breezy today. We'll see more sunshine this afternoon. Drier air comes in here. 15, 25 mile per hour winds tomorrow. Beautiful, chilly, and then we're kind of raw Thursday, Friday. More uh, showers. Looks good for the weekend. All right. Thank you, Mike, and thank you for being with us, everybody. Have a good Tuesday. Thanks for starting your day with us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.